Alright, today we're making griddle scones. Uh, I've already sorted all the ingredients out into measuring measuring uh, containers. And so you need to do that first, and I've already sieved the flour as well. So you start off with the bowl. Um, so you get, you get the salt and the flour into one. And then you get the butter and you mix it in with your fingers. One bit at a time. Until you get bread from sort of consistency, um, like this is just sort of this might take a minute or two. Uh, you use your fingers, obviously, which is the, the best way to do it. Um, and keep going until it's in like little bits, bitty sort of consistency. So uh, now, now you can see it's sort of. Bit not as not as smooth and th uh, small bits as it was at the start, and the butter's mostly no longer any big chunks of butter really. So you know once it's sort of like that consistency there, then you've got to add some milk. But I don't know how much milk the recipe says. Right? Um, you've got to sort of add it gradually until it forms a sort of dough, because that's what you're aiming for is a dough. So you just sort of you sort of get get the milk and just add a bit, and then and then mix it. And then once that's all sort of dried up, you add a bit, add a bit more milk, and then keep going like that. So there you go. I mean, obviously this is all with your fingers. It might feel a bit sticky and stuff, but it's not too bad. You want it to eventually form one big sort of clump of dough, not like loads of little bits. So, uh, you might end up using more or less milk, I don't know. Depends how much you need. Um, just sort of add it. I, might, I think this might need a bit more, actually. It's a bit, a bit dry, so... So overall, this recipe takes like I don't know, twenty minutes, half an hour, sort of thing. That's uh, that's kind of including cooking. But obviously, if you've got a small frying pan, you might take a longer because you'll have to cook like in them in batches rather than do them all together. Um, the these are, these are basically normal scones but cooked in a frying pan, which makes it quicker. So uh, they're just a bit easier to do. Um, yeah, they taste basically the same, but they're just a bit smaller and fried, so, yeah. Um, a bit more milk. Just a smidge. There we go. Um, then, so, once you've got this sorted, which is nearly done now, you'll want to have a, um, like a, a surface or breadboard prepped with flour. Um... It should be, you know, so that you can roll it on, because you'll need to be kneading and rolling, because it's dough. So once you got that, you put it onto the, the board here. Sort of. There's flour on it, a bit more flour. I'd say, in terms of milk, what you, what you want probably is between about 100 to 150 mil. That's probably the optimal. So then you just get it here and you start kneading it. Put a bit of uh, pressure onto it, just sort of fold it over, use your palm of your hand, and just push down onto it. And this is this should take a couple of minutes, just make sure it's all ready. Um, it, it won't like it won't appear to change that much, it will just sort of dry out and end up like this. Um, you also need to have a rolling pin ready. Because we're going to be rolling it out in a minute. So. Right, so that's pretty much ready. That's most mostly needed out there. So now, just sort of 
get a rough circle shape and you take your rolling pin put a bit of flour on the rolling pin and you just roll it over this take a few things until it's about five millimeters thick you can do it a bit thicker but any more than that and it because it will rise quite a bit and you don't want it too um too thick because then it won't cook properly in the time um if, if if there's too much dough to roll out to that thickness then you know, cut it in half and you can do two batches um and then and obviously you can either keep one lot of dough for the next time or you can just uh, cook two in, cook two, you know, and do a lot of them. Um, it's nearly done. So, pre preferably at a circle. You can do it other shapes, whatever shape you want. You can make a little gorilla or something. Um, you don't, you don't have to do a circle, but I, I think it's easier. Then once it's rolled out, you can obviously for this bit you can use a cutter, like a shape cutter, but. Um, I tend to use just a, just a knife and cut it into just slices. You can do whatever shape, obviously. Um, uh, just just to make it simpler. Obviously, if you do do a shape, it probably won't stay that shape particularly because it will change. So if you just sort of cut it along the middle, You have some nice slices there, and you separate the slices out. Mm. I mean, they're a bit thick, but it shouldn't be too bad. Um, then you want to get a frying pan ready, so you want it nice and greased or a non stick pan, um, so that because obviously they don't stick then, and you want it to heat to heat it up. Obviously, you can put it on a higher heat to start with but once they're in they need to be on only a medium heat so otherwise they'll burn very quickly um, so you want to turn your uh, hob on or gas or whatever you've got um, probably want some oil or something on there so you get the oil in the pan and get that nice and warm. Now, now the pan's warm and greased, you take a few of them, however many will fit, you don't into the pan, and you put them on like so. Then you leave them for about four minutes. So it's four minutes either side. Or, if they're not cooked, then obviously leave them in for a bit longer, and if they start to burn, take them out. You know, don't just sit there for four minutes thinking that you can't make decisions during that time. Now obviously this frying pan's a bit small, so I'm only doing about three at a time here. But if you've got a big frying pan, do as many as you want. It's the main reason I have to cut them up. I mean, if you really wanted, you could make one big one. But, it's, it's a lot sweet in one. Um, so, uh, as they cook, you don't, you, they shouldn't be, the pan should not be very hot because otherwise it will just burn the top and then it'll be raw in the middle, which is the opposite of what you want. You want the, the outside being nice brown and the inside being uh, cooked. All right, now let's they're, they're, they're flip them over. I'm using a, a fish slice here, but if you've got like a different spatula or grabbers or something, they're good. So they're, they're nice and uh, they're slightly brown on the top. It, obviously, if, if you flip them over and then they're not brown, you can just flip them back over and keep going until you think they're done. I mean, that is a bit more risky, but you know, you only need them to have a nice firm coating around the edge. And as you can see, they've, ri they've risen a little bit, but they're, they're not going to rise that much because they start off quite thin. Alright, so these have had... These have had uh, Four minutes either side. Probably, yeah, they're pretty much done right now. They're quite hot. 
So you just pop them out of the pan onto a plate. Turn the hob off, obviously. Don't want that burning over. And then, so the, the best way that they're normally eating is hot, straight out the pan, and you just sort of make a slight incision down the middle. Open it up, and there we go, look. Then, once that's done, you take some spreadable butter, or normal butter, or cream, or whatever you want on them, and just butter them lightly, and then you can have them like a, like a sandwich, you can have them as a, like a, just with the butter on top, you can have them however, that's the point, they're just basically normal scones, but fried. Uh, you've got to make sure that they're cooked on the inside as well before you eat them, otherwise, uh, you yeah, know, they'll be, be a bit nasty. So uh, that's, that's pretty much done. Um, you know, try, try cooking that at home.